Okay, so this is part three of chapter three, and we'll be looking at uh, macromolecules still, and this time we're doing carbohydrates. All right, so so far we've seen proteins. Now we'll look at carbohydrates. All right, so carbohydrate has a general formula. For every carbon, there's one water, and so this is the name, carbohydrate or a hydrated carbon. Hydration means to add water. And for each of these macromolecules, remember you want to know the, their general function. So for carbohydrates, we're talking about energy, um, storing energy, transporting energy. And if you think of carbohydrates, think of things like sugar and starches that we eat, and you know that they're related to energy. But carbohydrates are also important for structures. Okay, so they'll, they'll form uh, important structural parts of cells. Right. There's four major categories of carbohydrates, right? and the simplest are called monosaccharides. Mono means one, and saccharide is sugar. So this is the basic building block for bigger carbohydrates. Then a disaccharide is two monosaccharides linked together, so di means two. Oligosaccharide means many saccharides, so somewhere like three to 20 monosaccharides linked together is an oligosaccharide. And then polysaccharide is up to thousands of monosaccharides all linked together. And we're going to see some examples of these. Okay, so here we see glucose. If you look at the slide, there's a six carbon sugar that's glucose, and then another ring structure, glucose. Each of these are monosaccharides. This is the building block for larger sugar. So glucose is a simple sugar. Okay, here's another glucose. If we join those together, we create a disaccharide called maltose. When they link together, it's they're linked by a covalent bond. You see this solid line here between them? That's a covalent bond. It's a strong bond, remember? But more specifically for this um, carbohydrates we're talking about, it's called a glycosidic linkage. Okay. Now remember, when we're building something, this type of reaction has a specific name. We are creating water when we join these two building blocks together. So this is a hydration. Um, condensation or dehydration reaction. Okay, so there's a water that's formed, just like in condensation, water forms. Or when you're dehydrated, you pull water out of your body. So water's being pulled out of these two glucose uh, monomers, and we form water. Okay, so that's a, the condensation synthesis reaction. We're synthesizing a disaccharide. There's three types of um, sugars here. Then we can classify them based on the number of carbons. Okay, so the first one is a triose, it means it has three carbons, or three C, means triose. One, two, three, that's a three carbon sugar triose. You don't need to remember the specific name, glyceraldehyde, but three carbons. The next group here are pentoses, so just like a pentagon has five sides, these carbons, or these sugars have five carbons. So an example is ribose and deoxyribose. These five carbon pentoses are used to make DNA and RNA. And then six carbon sugars, or C6 compounds. So six carbons is a hexose, like a hexagon. Glucose, we saw, fructose, mannose, okay? These all have six carbons. So even if you don't know the name, you can recognize it's a hexose because of the number of carbons. Right, so we just mentioned hexoses, and a good example is glucose. This is a really important one. This is a basic energy source, and we'll be studying it later when we do our metabolism. Know the formula for glucose, C6H12O6. And glucose can exist in uh, different forms. It can be linear, or it can take a ring shape. So over here, you'll see a ring shape of glucose. Okay, That's the form it takes in a water solution. All right, let's take, so um, the glucose we saw, that was a monosaccharide. Let's take a look at some um, disaccharides. So on this slide, we have disaccharides. They form by two monosaccharides linking together. So here we join glucose and glucose, and we create maltose. So when they join, they join by a covalent bond. They share electrons. It's a strong bond. This is a glycosidic linkage. Also, when you tie together a glucose and a glucose to create a disaccharide, this is a Again, a condensation um, dehydration reaction because water is being formed. Here's some examples of disaccharides, maltose, sucrose, and lactose. 
Okay, so we've done monosaccharides. We looked at um, disaccharides, polysaccharides. These are giant polymers of thousands of monosaccharides linked together. You want to know these three, cellulose and starch and glycogen. Cellulose, this is a structural part of plants found in plant cell walls. It's also a dietary fiber. We do not digest cellulose. Okay, if you look at the, the diagram below, they're linear. Cellulose is linear. This next group is starch. This is also from plants, and this is the energy molecule in plants. It's branched shaped. So cellulose and starch, both from plants. And you can see, if you look at the images, you see all these repeated uh, green structures. Those are all monosaccharides linked together, thousands of them. Okay, it would expand beyond this, the slide. Lots of them linked together. So starch and cellulose, both from plants. Okay, then glycogen, also highly branched. This is the energy storage molecule for sugar in animals. Okay, so sugar gets stored as glycogen in the liver. One last carbohydrate, this is a polysaccharide also, is chitin. It's an important structural component of the exoskeleton of insects and other arthropods and fungal cell walls. Okay, and you can see a picture. It's all these repeated subunits over and over, thousands of them together, create exoskeletons and cell walls in these organisms. So those are the carbohydrates. We have monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. You know how they're formed. You group them together, the types of bonds, and um, some of their uses. All right. The last macromolecule we'll do in the next installment are the, well, not the last, but the next one we'll do is lipids. And that'll mean part three.